Hello everybody, well, just a little bit of a talk about some battle tactics, ancient battle tactics that really some generals and army commanders use now, pincer movements, flanking, stuff like that, yeah. Um, some of the great armies of the past were great because they were amazing at using terrain to their advantage. Um, for instance, the Battle of Hastings, 1066. Um, a Viking held off Stamford Bridge by himself against the English army for over an hour. Yeah, while his Viking comrades escaped. Do you know what I mean, right? Now, that was one man, one berserker, held that bridge for over an hour, swinging that axe, chopping heads left and right, arms coming off. They could not get past the guy because he had him in a choke point. I think, they could, I think on Stamford Bridge, I think it was, they could come at him two or four at a time. I think it was two or four. I think it might have been four at a time, but only four. And my man had a massive battle axe that could cleave heads easily, yeah? And he was willing to die. Berserkers were always willing to die. He would have been on magic mushrooms off his box, mate, at that moment. Do you know what I mean? With Thor and Odin screaming his name, waiting for him in the golden hall where he will drink mead all day with the gods. So he would have been happy to die. So he would have been, he would have been just been there thinking one thing, I need to take as many as I can with me to let my king escape. Yeah, the way they got him was that they sent some more soldiers underneath the bridge with long spears and they speared him from underneath the bridge. And obviously, eventually, they killed him. But, I mean, if he was holding moth for over an hour and they keep sending four at a time against him, I bet he killed hundreds of men. Hundreds. I mean, you all know about the, the uh, Battle of Thermopylae, the Spartans, the 300. Um, the way, the, the gates that they held, uh, the way it was, was you had a massive cliff on one side and then you had the ocean on the other, yeah? And you had like a small path that went around the cliffs, basically, yeah? And what they did, right, was they held... Uh, the, that was the way you got into Greece at the time. From, for, the, for the Persians' point of view, that was the way they... That was their line of advance through Greece, right? So basically, these 300 nutters, do you know what I mean? And there was nutters, do you know what I mean? All probably Danny G's, Yeah. <laughs> Off the red, do you know what I mean? You probably, you listen, you never know. They were probably taking magic mushrooms back then. Do you know what I mean, right? Or some kind of crazy stuff. And I mean, these were the best of the best. I mean, I've got to tell you straight. Yeah, some Spartans were what they call boy lovers. Do you know what I mean, right? But just because you're gay doesn't mean you're a soft man. Do you know what I mean, right? So these geezers trained every day, all day, every day, all day, every day, just to battle. So them 300 men, the estimated of what they're taking out realistically... People say they took out a million people. No, they didn't take out a million because he'd have no army left. His army didn't even consist of a million. His army consisted of about a quarter of a million, right? And the estimated that they took out was between 40 and 90,000 men. 300. Yes, they was skilled. They had really good weaponry. Do you know what I mean? And they knew how to use it. But they used the terrain to their advantage. They couldn't get flanked. <clears throat> I mean, we all know the story. Eventually, there was a hidden goat path that a traitor showed Xerxes and his army, and he managed to get his, his archers behind, yeah? And once his archers were behind and the soldiers were in front, they was caught in a pincer movement, yeah? And they was done. Do you know what I mean? They're all dead. Do you know what I mean, right? Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great's cavalry, uh, he had the phalanx, do you know what I mean? But that was a bit, it was a bit different to the Spartans' phalanx. The Greek phalanx, they had smaller shields, but mega long spears. I mean, I think there was about 20 foot and when them spears, they worked in, um, in squares, yeah? And when them spears were dropped, do you know what I mean, right? It created, like, uh, like I would imagine, like what looked like a, a hedgehog made of men and spears. And then what Alexander would do was he would bring his army forward with these spears and he pushed the enemy back. And then when the enemy was distracted enough, him and his cavalry would flank around the outside and always try to get to the back of the army to push them against the spears. Very, very effective. Very, very effective. Alexander always used to like to fight on a big open field. Do you know what I mean? Right, so he could do his flanking manoeuvres. Very, very clever, that man. That's why he took over half the world. Um, the um, Mongols, Genghis Khan, they used to attack on horseback and they would like ride forward. Their tactics were nuts because the bow and arrow, not so much nowadays. I mean, it's still deadly. It's a silent killer. In my opinion, it's better than a gun at up to 50 yards if you know how to use it, right, because it's silent. Um, but back in the day, I mean, the bow was the battle decider. Do you know 
Do you know what I mean, right? So the Mongols under Genghis Khan were amazing archers from horseback. Do you know what I mean? So they they had a small recurve bow, still very powerful, still probably 60 pound pull, uh, capable of firing an, uh, an arrow through a target probably easily at 50 meters, right? So you imagine a sortie of, I mean, he had thousands of men as well, because I mean, he united all the tribes of the plains. Uh, and if you don't know, anything about Genghis Khan, look him up. Very, 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 very interesting story in Genghis Khan. So is Alexander the Great, so is Leonidas. Not so much is known about Leonidas, but still very, 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 very. All of these stories that I'm telling you, all these people, there are stories, there are truths, and there is real history written about each one of them. Go and check it out, because they're all very interesting people. But Genghis Khan used to send his men in, yeah, on horseback, driving past you at full speed, delivering three arrows as they went past your army. And he'd send two, three, four, five, six thousand at the same time. So if they're releasing three arrows each by the time they've gone past your army, that's nine thousand arrows being released on your army. And then another wave of thousands come in, and then another wave of thousands come in. Do you know what I mean, right? It was very rare that it would even get down to swords. Do you know what I mean? Most of the time it would just decimate armies of arrows. I mean, that's why the English army back in the day was so powerful, because we had the longbow. So we had Welsh archers. Uh, that had been brought up from very young age, six years of age, uh, to use the longbow. The longbow, when fired in the air, yeah, is good for 250 metres when fired in the air, right, with heavy, heavy-duty battle arrows. Right, I'm sure the best archers could get, like, 250 metres by, you know, firing it right up in the air. And when you've got a big mass of soldiers in front of you, you don't really need to pick targets, you just need to aim at the mass. So if you're a good archer and there's 10,000 of you and it's like, draw! Loose 10,000 arrows. Knock, draw, loose 10,000 arrows. Knock, draw, loose. That'd be hell, man. That'd be a hellstorm. Do you know what I mean? That would be a hellstorm. I mean, that's why the Romans uh, developed Testudo. Now, Testudo was shield at the front. You've seen this. You will have seen it on Roman films. Uh, and shield over the top. And then they'd move forward, uh, crawl. Yeah, and then arrows would hit the shields and spears and rocks because back in them days, man used slings and stuff. Do you know what I mean, right? So they'd all hit the shields and then when they was in within distance, I don't know, 20 metres, they'd push the enemy back far enough, they'd break and then attack. Do you know what I mean? The Romans, when they was in Testudo, they'd break, attack the first few people and then form a line straight away. Do you know what I mean? And then start moving forward, stabbing, moving forward, stabbing. Because the Roman short sword was not made for slashing, it was not a slashing weapon. Uh, when they came to Britain, those Britons um, used slashing weapons, uh, like big swords that you could swing round with and look all fancy with. And do you know something, one-on-one -on -one would probably do the Romans, yeah? But the Romans didn't fight one-on-one, -on -one. they fought in tight formations. The reason the Romans were so successful is through the discipline. The discipline, the weaponry, yeah, the discipline and the weaponry was the main reason the Romans were so successful. They had extreme discipline. They really, really did. There was a mega, mega army. Do you know what I mean, right? You've also got uh, Hannibal of Carthage. <clears throat> now, Hannibal of Carthage, he marched his army over the Alps, elephants and all. Do you know what I mean, right? Now, when he, before he went over the Alps, he had like 70, 80,000 men, I think. And by the time he got over the Alps, he had half that. Half of them had died. I think he had, of all of his elephants, he only had a, a handful left. Do you know what I mean? Right, and he's still inflicted. I mean, he got to the gate. He could have gone to the gates of Rome, but he didn't. He diverted and fought some armies, right? And man, my man mullered Rome for years. Do you know what I mean? With less numbers, but better battle tactics. And it's very rare for the Roman battle tactics to be beat, but my man just knew how to beat them. So Hannibal of Carthage from North Africa, yeah, right, um, was a badass commander. I mean, look him up, read about all these people. There was all wicked commanders. And nowadays, we, have, we do use these tactics. We use flanking, obviously. We use pincer movements. Uh, I would imagine nowadays it would be used of artillery. Do you know what I mean, right? So you'd probably bring your, shoulder, your soldiers in. They'd form a line, um, a defensive line, well, or an attacking line. Do you know what I mean? With trenches and stuff built. Um, and then tanks and whatever, helicopters and whatever would come in the rear of the enemy and push them towards the soldiers or the soldiers would move from the front and push them towards the artillery. I would imagine that's really how it would work. It would be like a pincer movement nowadays or you'd get the, the, the flank. You've got a town here. Um, you would put fire at the front of the town, uh, mortars, 
uh, people with sniper rifles, uh, people with big machine guns to cause as much noise and as much commotion as they can, kill as many people as they can, destroy the front of the town as much as they can. That will force the defending soldiers to the walls of the town. When the defending soldiers come to the walls of the town, they will still leave some um, defending the other walls, but the mass of them will come to the front. I mean, if you can cause enough damage at the front, they'll have to bring the whole army to the front to defend the front walls. You know what I mean, right? And then you will literally sneak squads into the place. Do you know what I mean? Until they get into perfect position on rooftops, basically again in a pincer movement and then they'll add fire from behind they will have already killed the small troop of people that you've got guarding the walls there'll be nothing left behind they will have already cleared it all and then they'll just focus their fire on you on the wall and then the people outside the wall will, and you'll get you'll get pincered you'll just get absolutely done you'll get caught in the middle do you know what i mean right um I mean, that's what I call a pincer movement anyway. I mean, that might be the, not might be the correct word for it, but that's what I call a pincer movement. And obviously, a, a flanking is flanking. Do you know what I mean, right? It's getting behind the enemy or to the side of the enemy without the enemy knowing. So that then you can cause mass destruction on a... Uh, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Um, surprise. When you can surprise the enemy quickly, cause massive damage and cause the enemy then to have to fight on two fronts. Uh, once you can cause the enemy to fight on two fronts... It's kind of done. The battle's done. Do you know what I mean, right? Um, you've got to understand as well that, I mean, back in the day, the tools of war were, man, maces. Do you know something? I mean, you know that you had knights in armour eventually. And do you know why they made maces and hammers and stuff? Because swords and that can't really get through that plate armour. But you smash a mace or a hammer into the plate armour, it smashes the bone underneath. Do you know what I mean, right? So it breaks the bones underneath the armour, whether you've got plate armour on or not. And I mean, the maces with the big spikes, because all the energy is forced into the end of that spike, you could crack armour, you could actually get through it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a sword, the energy is all across the blade, yeah? Or like a, a standard axe, the, a light axe, the energy is distributed across the blade. When you've got like a war hammer with a point on the end, just a spike, all that force is, is straight through the spike so you can crack armour. But, I mean, before that, Alexander the Great and that, they used a lacquered armour, which would stop a sword slash, but it wouldn't stop a spear thrust or a Roman gladius thrust. It wouldn't really stop a thrust. So these people used to have to be very, very, very skilled in war. I mean, a lot of the soldiers, especially in uh, Alexander the Great's army and the Roman army, they were paid professional soldiers. So it was their job to fight every day. And these men were very, very adept at it. Do you know what I mean? Very, very adept. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, we all know Alexander the Great took over half the world. The Romans took over half the world. Do you know what I mean? It speaks for itself. The Mongols decimated half the world. It speaks for itself. These people, especially their commanders and the rulers, were just great elite people. Uh, we still have them now who go to war now. Do you know what I mean? Some generals, not all generals, I imagine some generals are just silver sped spoon toughs who have never had a fight in their life, but some generals will be truly tough, tough, intelligent men. Do you know what I mean, right? Um, that will obviously lead you to victory if you listen to what they're saying. Um, war is always about, in my opinion, it's always about inflicting the most damage um, and taking the most back. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's that simple. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I believe in guerrilla tactics. So, I mean, if I went to war, I would employ guerrilla tactics. I would split into small groups of people, cause like shock, massive damage, then retreat, and then cause shock, massive damage from a different place and retreat cause shock massive damage and then retreat. Do you know what I mean? That's basically how I would go about war. If it was me and I had an army, we would split into several different armies and attack from all different sides and then just retreat into the darkness. We'd, we'd really always attack at night until I decimated the army enough to know that I could meet them on a battlefield and just decimate them all. Do you know what I mean? Right. And then I would meet them on a battlefield in the daytime and decimate them all. Decimate them all. But it would Sorry be a feel that somebody wronged me, yeah. So this is the end of the video. I've only got about 20 seconds left or something, yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. A little bit of a talk about ancient battles and battle tactics. Um, but yeah, just to finish what I was saying, I would decimate the army, uh, wait until there was either retreating and on their field of march, pick a field, dig trenches, do you know what I mean? Make it like a murder den. Make it like a death den. Do you know what I mean? Right, and then just attack from all angles. It'd be mayhem, man. Do you know what I mean? But that's how I would do it. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wicked day. Peace out.